chill with it, man. It's your man, P. Rice. I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Well, it's the big Mac a dosha. All right, sipping Remy on the rocks with a cold cut on uh, Cuban links. All right, y'all. So we got the coolest off the porch with us today, Primo Rice. How are you feeling? Feeling good, feeling great. How are you feeling? I'm feeling amazing. Good, now, good. you know, I mentioned to you earlier, I thought you were from the South. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you get that a lot? Uh, yeah, of course I do. You know, I'm a soulful dude, bro. You know. It is what it is. Now, you are from PG County, though. Yep, yep, PG County, Oxon Hill. So talk to us about the culture in PG County. Uh, PG County, man, it's a land of a lot of dudes. We get the girls, you know what I'm saying? We got the prettiest girls, you know what I'm saying? And you know we got niggas like me. Just. <laughs> <laughs> they do their thing. Yeah. Now, where would you say it is musically? Uh, it's in a good space. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of people coming out of there, you know. It's in a good space, good space, real good space. Now, for you personally, what was life like for you growing up in PG County? It was cool, you know. I had, uh, I had both my parents till about like 13, 14. But yeah, it was, it was good. It was good. Now, you say you had both of them till 13, 14. Did it affect you like when they split up or you was kind of just like, uh? I think that was probably the best thing that happened. You know what I'm saying? Because having both of your parents, I realized they work together. So like, it ain't no game. You got good <laughs> parents, it ain't no games. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like when they split up, I was able to like do my thing. I stayed with my mother after that. So yeah. she just let me be a kid. You know what I'm saying? Just do what, do what I wanted to do. There wasn't really no restrictions. Oh, so that. you had a lot more freedom with your mom. Yeah, yeah. My dad was probably a little more strict. You know what I'm saying? Really? It was just hard work, you know what I'm saying? My dad was, my mother was a hustler. My grandma was a hustler. My dad was just a hard working dude, you know what I'm saying? Stand up guy. So, you know, I ain't playing no games. I want, you know, you want to raise your kids well. Right. So. Now, we got to get into how you were actually into music, like, your whole life. Mm -hmm. And you started off with playing in the band. Mm -hmm. So, talk to us about that. Yeah, I did that. Uh, I played a few instruments in school, you know what I'm saying? And... That's what I was good at. You know what I, mean? I did that, play ball too. I was like trying to be an all American nigga, you know what I'm saying? Do my thing. Not an all American. <laughs> nah, nah, but yeah. Nah, I did that for years, and that, that, that told me how to, how to do this. You know wow. I mean? You gotta be a student of the music if yeah. you really wanna be great. Yeah, so yeah. if I'm not mistaken, you were like, uh, well, you were like the best in the city around that time? Yeah, I was like the best in the county, like one of the best musicians. Just on some, on some musician stuff. Yeah. Now, were you getting the bitches playing the trumpet? Of course. Just getting the bitches yeah, playing the trumpet? Yeah, of course. You get the, I'm trying to tell you, bitches love music. It don't matter <laughs> they how do. it comes. You know what I'm saying? They Miles do. Miles Davis played the trumpet. And what'd he do? Look it up. You feel me? So, now, who would it. you say were some musical influences for you growing up? My music teacher. He was a big influence. Uh, my grandmother was a big influence musically. You just wake up. I mean, I was at my grandmother's house a lot, like a whole lot as a kid. So he was waking up hearing that good shit. All that was 70 soul and all that, you know what I'm saying? It's a good time. So you know we got to ask you, when did you officially jump off the porch? About 13, 14. My Thir parents got divorced. I was, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to tell you, my, my mother just let me, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> do my thing for real. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what would you say was like a major life lesson that you learned quickly growing up off the porch? You can't be too nice. You feel me? You can't be too nice. You gotta be aware. It's probably the best thing I learned. Now, yeah. what is your definition of like too nice? It's just like when I was younger, like 13, you know, you want, as a kid, you in school, you know what I'm saying? You make it around. You want to be everybody, you know what I'm saying? You want to know everybody. You want to be a cool nigga in school, you know what I'm saying? So after a while, it don't matter. You feel me? And I realized that early. It didn't matter. I kept the same niggas around. At around like 13, 14, I kind of been with the same niggas. You feel me? So that's what I learned quick. Now, we finna turn it up a notch because <laughs> you know I can't wait to get into this. For okay, sure. first and foremost, can we talk about the pimping or? 
I mean, look, I'm, I'm gonna put it this way with the pandemic. <laughs> it, it's women, ladies, hoes, bitches, they wanna put money in my hand because I'm a man first, you feel me? I'm a stand-up man, I'm a solid man. I'm a man that, that, that's going somewhere, that knows where he's going. A lot of niggas is not on that, you feel me? And that's all I'm gonna say about that. You feel Dang, me? I did. Because there's more to it. It's yeah. like it's, it's people, people like the way pimping is. People de demoralize the shit. You know what I'm saying? And so like, once you get out of some some low level shit, like it's, it's more to it. It's about being a leader. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, like. That's all I'm gonna say about that. All right, so <laughs> from your perspective, why did you? Why do you feel like some women need a pimp when they're in the game? Women not good with their money. Realistically, you know what I'm saying. I feel like you're else, you're blasting you know? me. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not blasting. I'm, I'm just playing. You know what I'm saying and protection. You know what I'm saying. It's now, crazy niggas out here. It's crazy. It's Weird ass dudes out here. So, is it possible to actually have a girlfriend like while you do stuff like this? Nah, that ain't even pimping. Oh, so that's not. Yeah, uh, I mean they, they call it boyfriend pimping. But yeah. Boyfriend pimping is that? So like, what's the tiers of like the top ones and the low ones? What you mean? As far as pimps. With the top ones? Yeah. I don't even know they do it. You know what I'm saying? It's more to it. You know what I'm saying? Like they're real leaders. It's, it's, it's real life. It's past that low level shit. You feel me? That that a lot of people get into. Like it's just real leaders out here. So this yeah. is like a real. This is a whole nother. This is a whole nother world. Once you expand your mind past the low level shit, it's a whole different. You can pimp. You can pimp your. You can pimp your life. You feel me? Like. You can really pimp the world, not not just on something about pimping a bitch. You feel me? Now, and go once you realize that. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You prosper. I'm trying to tell you, you prosper. Now, um, I do want to ask you what's like a crazy story that you've had to experience that when you were like in the game. It was nothing that crazy for me to really experience because like that shit kind of found me, so I was just living life. Wait, what do you mean it found you? It found me. I wasn't, like I said, I don't come from pimps. I don't come from, my family's not full of pimps. I come from hard workers and hustlers. Right. You feel me? So, me doing other shit, straying away from it, it just found me because I'm doing other shit. I'm trying to do some other shit when the game, like, nah, bro, this is what you need to do. And that's how everything came about. Now, I guess, like, talking to you, I am kind of curious on, like, I would say how your persuading works. <laughs> how my persuading works? Like, how do you get bitches? Like, Yo, when you a man and you just solid, I look good, stop playing. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's nothing. It's nothing. When you, when you stand on it, when you about, because a lot of niggas got mouthpiece, but a lot of niggas don't got action. So when you got the action behind it, how can you lose? In any perspective, that's not even on some pepper shit. That's just, if you want to get a bitch, bro. You know what I'm saying? Now, how can you spot a real P from like somebody that's just like lame? You gotta be a cool nigga to, to you can't tell like a, a regular <laughs> nigga that. You gotta be a cool nigga, it's just like it's in you. Like I can spot that shit from a mile away. So, so like from a dating perspective, like I, I'm gonna give you my perspective on what I think a real P is. For sure. Like I think a real P is like a dude where you don't really know what's going on with them, and yeah. they don't and they don't tell you like you you'll never know. You don't. But a real, I mean, a dude that's like a lame, like you know all the girls they mess with, you know just everything, you know too much yeah, yeah, about yeah. them. For sure. So am I am I right? In a sense. <laughs> oh. <laughs> In a sense. In a sense, like you know. The, the the low level niggas is loud. It's just like a hustler though. It's the same it's the core like corresponds the same way. Right. It's just loud. When you loud, you know what I'm saying? You know you're really getting it. You know we know the niggas who are really getting it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, they don't you don't do too much. You don't gotta do too much. Cause you did. 
And that's it's that's not about thing. showing the money. It's showing what you do with the money. So. Yeah. Wow, I don't really got nothing else to say. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that perspective. I've never heard anybody like that says stuff like that. Cause you know, a lot of people flash money nowadays. It's like the thing to do. Yeah, hey, nah, we don't gotta do that. Over here, live forever records, man. We don't, we don't gotta do all that. We just <laughs> show what we're about. You know, I know you spent some time in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So what was that about? I was in school. Uh, my father was in the military, so I got over it. I was born in Hawaii, you feel me? So went back there for school, and that's where the game found me. That's where the game found you. Because in PG, as a kid, if you looked at Pimpin' in PG, just being real, it wasn't like, it was nothing, it was nothing praised, you know what I'm saying? We was praising niggas in the go-go bands and shit. That's, that's who you wanted to be as a kid, you know what I'm saying? We was in the go-go's every motherfucking day. So when I went to the West Coast, it expanded my mind. You know wow. And then, I'm sorry, but I just wouldn't think that they would be, like, doing that in Hawaii. What? Like, you know, there's pimps out there. Yeah. Is that, like, a big thing in Hawaii? Maybe. I don't, now I couldn't tell you. Yeah. But, you know, when I was there, that shit was, she was right there in your face. The actual strip that was getting busy, Shit don't even exist no more. Really? I went back there, what, this year? This year, last year, it don't exist no more. Wow. Yeah. Now, did you have people, older people, like, show you the game, or you kind of just sat back and observed yourself? I observed. I took it all in. I'm like a fly on the wall. You know what I'm saying? I just observed everything. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> women run their mouth. They just run their mouth. So when you, you know, when you just observe motherfuckers, you can just learn a lot, you learn a lot. Wow, well, I yeah. feel like you would probably be like a cool, you know, like smooth, cool. Yeah, yeah, ain't no gorilla pimping shit over there, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I gotta like. I do all that. I don't, I'm trying to tell you when, you, when you got something going forward, when you, when you, when you, got, a, when you got a goal you're looking at, yo, nothing can get in your way. It don't even matter about a, you know what I'm saying, bitch, I don't gotta, Got to argue with you about something, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to put my hands on you, you know what I'm saying? I might, I might talk a little shit. Right. But that's, about, that's all I got to do. It's like, yo, I'm going to get it regardless. I'm gonna, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to get the way I got to get regardless. So your perspective as a male and as a woman, like, how would you say it's like the easiest way to get money out of a dude? You know, a lot of niggas is tricks, so it's really not hard. I mean, you just got to be, look good. Look good, have a little bit of mouthpiece on you, talking nigga out some money. It's just, <laughs> it's just not that hard. You can definitely talk a trick out some money. It's so easy. You, you know say I mean? it's so easy. Just being around, you know what I'm saying? I come, I'm like a lion, yo, no bullshit. I come from, I just been around a lot of women, you feel me? I'm really a lion out here. So like, you just see it happening. You just, I'd be amazed, like, damn, that's what you really do, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my sisters and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like real shit, you just see, <laughs> Crazy shit going on. Like how the dudes, they be weak in the knees. You yeah, know? they really just be weak in the <laughs> knees. It be crazy. Oh my God. That's what y'all be saying, stand up. That's what y'all be saying. Yes, yeah, stand up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shit. All right, so getting back into your music, I mm -hmm. know that you started off as a producer. Yeah. So talk to us about that. Uh, I was making beats at first. So I'm saying, you're just doing music, y'all. You can, music, you can do some music so many ways. So I started making beats around like 2012. But I was bullshitting around. Now, man, AJ started rapping first. That's how this all came about. So he really wanted me to start getting into beats because he knew I was good at music. So, uh, yeah, I did that for a little bit. Um, you know, life happens. So I make like a little compilation tape or whatever, just niggas on it, random niggas I knew. And I uh, did a song by myself on there. Everybody liked that song most. Feel me? So that's how I like the producing to rapping came about. Ooh, so wait, before we get all the way deep into the music, I do know that you was kind of like Vine famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably. Talking a little shit on this, six seconds of talking so shit. So is that where you like originally got like buzz to your name or? 
Yeah, 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 nah, for sure. I was just, yeah, it was just six seconds. I just talk a little shit on the phone. Like I wasn't doing like wild skits or nothing like that. And then they had this shit called uh, Fry Your Ass Friday and shit when you just be joining and cooking niggas. And I was just dogging niggas on that. And so that's how I kind of got famous on Vine and shit. And, uh, <laughs> really? Real talk. I used to, uh, shout out to Super. You know Super who make the makeup? Super? Super? Oh, Super Scent. Yeah. yeah, we used to go at it on Vine, yo. We used to cook Y'all used to go each back other. and forth cooking each other? Yeah, shout out to her though, yo. You know, real shit, DC Young Fly. We used to go at it all the time. You know what I'm saying? That shit was cool, yeah. It was just on, it was like a, it was, I was on there when it was really like a hood ass app. You know what I'm saying? It was just like a hundred us funny niggas and a bunch of stripper bitches. Stripper, oh. A bunch of stripper bitches. <laughs> I, why I didn't Vine. even know there's a lot of strippers This one, boy, Vine, Vine was popping. Like, I, I, I hit Vine early. So it was, it was all right. So how yeah. you feel when they got rid of it? I wasn't tripping, because I already knew, like, I'd be having a plan, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I already knew I was get this music, get this music going through here, so I don't need this shit no more. Because I knew that shit was going to fall off. Now, how did your fan base react to you making music? They fuck with it. They did. Because it was like, I was literally, you know, I was telling the same shit that I be talking on the songs now. Like, I was just doing it in six seconds. So when the music came out, it was like, yo, this nigga's on the same shit. I wasn't talking about killing niggas. I was talking the same shit I was on Vine and I talk now. And it just worked out. Like, niggas was fucking with me. I just had to keep growing. Because, you know, on Vine, it was a bunch of niggas trying to make it rapping all Vine. So you just oh, had to yeah, separate yeah, yourself. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And how would you say you were able to really separate yourself? Cause it's in you, not on you. You said what? Cause it's in you, not uh, on you. Yeah, and that's I knew real. I had it. That's real. Yeah. So when did you decide to really just go all in and take it serious and pursue it full time? On um, 2014. 2014, we all went in, uh, me and my niggas, and I dropped uh, Max Sagas. And like, what was it, 2015? Yeah, that's what I knew. Were you nervous putting out your first project? Nah, look, actually, yo, I thought I was gonna put that motherfucker out and niggas gonna blow the stratosphere to the moon. But that shit ain't do much. But I knew I had something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I knew, like, niggas yeah. was fucking with it. It wasn't like niggas weren't fucking with it. I just thought the world was gonna fuck with it, you know what I'm saying? But that was just the start of me getting to work. My bad, my voice hoarse and shit. I've been on tour, man. No, it's speaking yeah, of the tour. Okay, yeah, so yeah. we got to talk about the Coast to Coast tour because earlier you mentioned how, you know, instead of kind of bringing like people on that you already knew could yeah. rap, you would find the locals within the city. Yeah, yeah, I'll be tapped in. Me and my niggas, we listen to a lot of, you know what I'm saying? We know what it's like to be it. So we listen to a lot of niggas, you know what I'm saying? I just try to find the best, because I like to hear some good music. I'm not trying no bullshit at my shows. Because I'm not giving no bullshit at my <laughs> no, shows. No, facts, so. for sure. Yeah. And are you still a, you're still an independent artist, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, so what has your grind looked like as an independent artist? Look good. <laughs> uh, when you person, I mean, it's just all about staying consistent, man, perseverance. Not letting shit get to you. Not, uh, not, how you want to put it, like, not letting shit get to your head. Not letting shit impress you easy. You know what I'm saying? Being good with your money. That's what independence looks like. Okay, yeah. you guys look like some financial literacy advice. You just gotta be good with your money. <laughs> I can't explain it, yo. You gotta hustle and be good with your money. You gotta right. work. Like, I was broke as. I ain't gonna say I was broke, but I wasn't getting no money from music until you know, 2017 or something. 2018. I started in 2014. So, the first four years, we was just still getting it. You know what I'm saying? Those was probably the best times, but yeah, yeah we, was, we was still really grinding. Like, it, wow. was, it was real. Now, how important do you feel it is to make music that caters to women? It's very important because y'all buy. <laughs> y'all put the money in my hand. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta, you gotta, you know what I'm saying, cater to that. Right. And in, the, in, the, in, the, in the profession I'm in now, I gotta cater to that. You know what I'm saying? I gotta, I gotta keep feeding that. That's why I put out shit like strictly for my bitches, you know? 
stuff like that, make it move a little bit, some good bubble bath music, shit like that. No, yeah, like the mix, <laughs> I think my thing that like really gets me with you is like your album covers. Yeah, yeah. Them hoes be so like <laughs> interesting. So when I first yeah, came across yeah. you and I heard Strictly for the Bitches, like by the way, my favorite song on there is Strip Club Joint. That's, okay, shake that's down. the yeah, one, yeah, yeah. that's the one. That beat sample, sure. What? who was that? It's a, a Japanese jump, but Currency did that jump before too. He had the high top whites. That's what a lot of people know it from. But it's a Japanese sample. Wow, that, mm -hmm. that's my jam right there. But yeah. yeah, so like I said, like your album covers, how it kind of shows like, you know, the pimp lifestyle. Like yeah. it's real. You know what I'm saying? I got it. It's a portrait, man. A portrait of a pimp. Have you ever heard your songs in the strip club? Of course. How do the dancers be? Do they just be like moving real slow or like? If they don't know it, they, you know what I'm saying? They just try to get into their groove. Uh -huh. You got to think, what you hear in the strip club is a bunch of hard ass That's trap. what I'm saying. So like, my shit come on, so it kind of changes their vibe. I feel like it make them get sexy because they be working hard. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, they be shaking hard for the trap shit. My shit come on, they, you know what I'm saying? Smooth it out, get their little silhouette on. Yeah, you know that's why I was curious because I'm like, okay, has this song ever played in the strip club? Because you know that trap music, like that's the big thing, especially in the South, mm -hmm. strip, the Southern strip clubs. Yeah. So it's like when your music comes on, I'm like trying to envision how the strippers would actually, you know. Yeah, they just, you know, it'd be more silhouette-ish, you know what I'm saying? They get, <laughs> they get extra sexy to my shit. I love that for you. Yeah. Love it for you. Now let's talk about your dynamic with Larry June, because I know you guys have did some songs together as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, he cool, I mean, that's my nigga, you know what I'm saying? Uh, who we meet? Like 2019 or some shit. And, uh, we just vibed out, like, you know what I'm saying? That's a nigga I could probably kick it with from time to time. You feel me? You can relate. And it was, uh, now, has he, has he ever gave you some gems? Nah, we, we... We talk like just two regular niggas. Like, it don't even be on some like, you know, like all of a rap niggas. It'd be like a bunch of motivational bullshit going on the whole time. We really just kick it like two regular niggas. Like, it'd be all some off brand shit. It's not even all some like gang. You feel me? Yeah. It's just really on some, you know, it's a, it's a friend. You know what I'm saying? We can just have regular conversation. And I know you actually went on tour with him too as well. Yeah, so yeah. what was that experience like? It was cool. It was rocking the house. It was like, it was like a, a like a gladiators arena and shit. You know what I'm saying? I had to go on further guy. Cause you gotta think at that time, niggas ain't, niggas was there for him. So I had to show niggas what I was about. You know what I'm saying? So I'm coming with the hate makers. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was like a heavyweight battle in that bitch. I was fucking with it. How would you say the crowd first reacted to you on that tour with your sound being so different? On the West Coast, they weren't really even hip to me yet. So really? it was just me like showcasing what I got, but they was definitely fucking with me. Like every, every show that tour, after you, after you heard me that night, you was listening to my shit that night. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was, that's, that's what that tour was for real. Like just really showing up. I'm gonna say I got the most love we was like in Ohio or some shit. Cause that tour ended early cause COVID caught. Oh shoot, You feel yeah. me? So we got to like Ohio. I forgot what other cities we did. But Ohio was fucking with me heavy. Have you ever faced any challenges with pursuing your rap career? Just knowing what's what. I came in and we came in the game knowing nobody. You know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas be, be having a little edge. They know people. They connected. We was really just some niggas from Oxon Hill, Maryland, PG County, Maryland, trying to really make a way in this jump. So we ain't know who was who and what was what and what was legit. You feel me? It was really like straight from nothing. Like straight from nothing. And, you know, we just made our way. It's all about the sauce, you know what I'm saying? It's any and that on you. Yeah. Now, when it comes to navigating in the music industry, what advice would you give to an upcoming artist who's having trouble with that? Keep making great music. Be hard on yourself about what you make. 
have some niggas around you that's like, yo, bro, that's whack. It's not good enough, bro. You can do better. You need niggas like that. Um, if you're doing it independent, you gotta be ready to do this 10 years without nobody knowing you. Gotta be ready for that. If you're not ready for that, if you're not ready to literally put in 10 years of maybe doing a bunch of nothing, you're not gonna make it. This is just coming from like awesome. If you don't know nobody, if you, you know what I'm saying, you don't got no connections. Because the internet is powerful. That's how I made it off of it. But yeah, you gotta be ready to do 10 years of straight groundwork. Straight ground. Straight groundwork. Now, you're on this tour coast to coast, but when are we going to get another project? Uh, we got a group tape coming, you know what I'm saying? This is my nigga AJ right here, if y'all don't know. You know, if you, if you know me, you know who these niggas are. It's my nigga AJ, it's my nigga King Joe, it's my DJ right here, Finesse. It's my cameraman, everything, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we got a group tape coming real soon, probably here through the summer, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm a, uh, I may put out some... I may put out some new shit right after that. I can't call it. The way I make my music, man, is really off the, off the field. I just don't, I don't overwork myself. Cause like, music for me is like, it's like basketball. If you hoop, you gotta get the warm up in, you know what I'm saying? You gotta get my warm up jumpers in and shit before I really go out there and play. So it takes time for me to really like, Cause I want to create great shit. I try to make top to bottom projects. A lot of niggas be saying that shit, but a lot of niggas is not doing that. I try to make top to bottom, try to make that shit sound like a real soundtrack. So like, it take me a while, it take me some time. But you might get something, I mean, I may be working. You might get something like the fall. Wow, so you really take your time with this. Yeah, I don't play about this shit, man. This shit is, this shit is real. Shit is really real. You know? Dang, do you be feeling you that pressure play. from the fans though? Cause you know we we be waving. I do, sometimes I do, I do. I am, I try to be a customer service dude, cause you got to be that in this game. Uh, but if you want that good shit, you know what I'm saying. If you don't want microwavable fast food shit, you gonna wait for it. Right, and that's very true. I'm giving you a five star meal. You know what I'm saying? Every hour my give you. Projects that you've dropped, which one means the most to you and why? Um, hmm. I'm going to say, uh, can I give the top three? <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> right. I'm going to say Night at the Chateau. Because that shit was... I was really dedicated to my grandma. You know what I'm saying? It was like really from the heart and shit. Uh, I'ma say strictly for my bitches. Oh, that's my, sh that is my shit. Like, that's my take. Cause I was really in the mix on some real life shit. Making that. Uh, and the right state. The right state. Cause that, that was, but like you hear the, you hear the, you hear the years I put in. Right. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I say that's top three. Now, before we wrap up, do you have any last words or shout outs? You know what I'm saying, uh, shout out my niggas, man. Live forever records, man. My nigga Chino, man. My nigga AJ King Joe, finesse in the back. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Black owned business right here, and they ain't signing nobody. You feel me? Real shit going on. Shout out to all my niggas back home. We out shit. Well, it's the big Macadocious. Alright, sipping Remy on the rocks with a cold cut. Uh, Cuban link shining.